Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the G1000's flight plan controls. Now one of the nice things about the flight plan controls in the G1000NX is that you have a lot of little ways to kind of tweak things to make them work a little bit better for you. Let's get started. So first things first, uh, we're going to be setting up a flight today. Uh, we're going to make this kind of interesting because we're going to add a couple of little legs to it to make things a little more exciting than usual for us. So what I'm going to do to do this is uh, two different things. Uh, the first thing we can do is we can come over here on the PFD and press the FPL button. The other option we have is we can actually take our G1000 over here and go all the way over to our active flight plan page. Uh, either one is totally acceptable. Um, one, if it's easier for you on the left side, use the one on the left. If it's easier on the right side, use the one on the right kind of a thing. So what I'm actually going to do is keep it kind of simple today, but I'm going to leave this open so you can kind of see what it looks like. So I'm going to press FIPL. Uh, the first thing it's going to ask us to do is uh, give us our origin. Uh, this is kind of important because it gives us the ability to basically kind of set up the line the way we want it to go. I know that sounds a little weird, but it's actually really useful. So I'm going to go ahead and use uh, one big knob to come to this little line underneath. Go ahead and use this one. I'm going to go ahead and dial in where we're starting today. So today we're starting from uh, Simsbury Airport, which is just close by to an international airport. No, just like we're basically right east of us. So we'll go uh, 4 Bravo, and we're going to set this to oh, 4B. And this would be nice if you had a Cirrus where you could actually dial the keyboard. It makes it so much easier. So we're starting at Robertson. Um, I'm sorry, Simsbury. It's going to ask us what runway. We don't have to dial in a runway here if we don't want to. But in this case, I know I'm using runway 21, so I'm just going to go ahead and select it. And when you're ready, you press end. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and select any on route waypoints. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this sucker. By the way, if it's magenta, it means it's been selected. We're going to go ahead and add a couple different on right route right points here. So I'm going to come down here. We're going to go ahead and select. First one's going to be a, a particular location. It's going to be a VOR. So I'm going to use Heart for VOR, which is, like I said, adds a little bit of a leg to this. Oh, HFD. Looks pretty good. I'm going to press enter. It's going to say, wait a minute. Did you mean Hartford or did you mean any new US? So I really want a VOR. I don't want Hayfield. So I'm going to go select Northeast US. Press the button. Notice this thing went, whoa. The reason it did that is because it knows that to get from here to here, you need to be here. Just kind of a neat trick. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and dial in another one. I'll go ahead and keep it simple here. We'll use Groton as a waypoint here. Do G-O-N. Golf Oscar November. And again, like I said, we're keeping this uh, pretty simple, but like we'll change things and get all complicated once we get up in the air. So it's Groton. It's going to give us a bunch of choices. I'm interested in Groton VOR. Select that. Notice it is not selected. But also notice, if I were to come over here, as I'm doing this, all the information is starting to plug itself in, which is actually really useful for us. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, push the button again. And we're going to go scroll down. Notice I'll we'll come to here. I'm not interested in another waypoint, but what I am interested in is going to be my destination here. Uh, so we're going to go down to a MIVI here. So I'm going to go ahead and do a key which is convenient because in the US we start with K and we're going to go ahead and do a mic and we're going to go down to Victor and I'll we'll switch it over to Victor and we're going to go ahead and pick yeah. oh <laughs> Victor care Victor Victor okay got I need a, I really need a new mouse one of these days okay MVY is your destination press enter uh, it's going to ask us for a runway another uh, runway we'll go ahead and give this a wiggle we're going to assume we're going to be taking runway 24 today which is fine I'm going to press enter and ta-da, our flight plan has now been programmed. There's actually a lot of little things you can do with this. Now let's go ahead and pop over here for a second here. You'll notice that I've got all this stuff pre-programmed and ready to go. But one of the things you can do on the flight plan page here that you can't do over here is we actually have a lot of control over things on the individual waypoints. For example, if I select back to my controls, let's go pop down to GU on. Now, if I came over this and I press the enter key on it, it'll actually bring up a page that will give me things like, you know, the frequency, which is a wonderful little detail that we can't get on the other page. The other thing we have the ability to is if I select a particular point of a waypoint, let me go ahead and get this out of the way before it makes me actually insane here. If I were to press the direct button, this would give me the ability to pop over to it almost. As you're going to see, it gets a little more complicated. But one of the, my favorite things about the direct to option is you can actually dial in the course you want to approach something. Now, normally we'd be approaching this at a 150 course. If I wanted to, I could come down here and I can actually change this approach. Let's say for some reason I wanted to approach it at a 155 degree course. Now, if I came down here and press activate, it would give me a direct two way point. So I'm going to go and press enter. And you'll see now that it's trying to get me to that destination along that new heading I just created. Again, we don't have anything like this in other GPSs. This is super cool because you can use it to line yourself up for runways. I love it. Now, we don't want that direct to. Notice it's got that arrow to tell us we're no longer en route here. What we really want to do is we want to be able to activate the leg. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my mouse back over the correct one. Now, if you notice, you can collapse airways and everything like that. The one I want to do, I'm going to press Menu, Scroll to activate leg and then press the enter key. It's going to say, are you sure you want to do this? And it's going to tell you exactly what your intention was. I'm going to press activate. Check it out. 
And now we are back on our original flight plan, which is going to take us from runway 21 down to Hartford and then over to those other points. Now, it's worth noting, if I go ahead and exit out of this page, let's go ahead and press this a few times to go ahead and zip back, bup, 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 bup. I also have the ability to do the same thing here. If I press the fipple button, I can now select between different legs. So let's say I wanted to go my Hartford to Groton leg. I could actually come down here and I'll press menu and then I can activate that leg instead. So if I press activate, it's like, are you sure you want to do that? I'm like, yeah, let's do that. Notice this automatically updated, and also notice my little magenta line of safety here automatically updated to that specific leg. As long as your flight plan is still selected, you still have the ability to go back and actually change these things around. Now, for me, I didn't actually want to do that. I meant to do this. So it's going to say, is this what you want? I pressed, yeah, we're fine. Now, one of the other things I love about this particular version of this that they did a really nice job on is I can do direct to anywhere. So if I wanted to actually go down to Mivia right now, and I wanted to go right to runway 24, I could actually press direct, and it would ask me, is this what you wanted to do? And I say, yeah, take me there. Boop, activate, ding. And now notice, I have a direct arrow that takes me straight there, even though I have waypoints between us and them. Now, let's say I made a mistake. I'm like, oops, I did not mean to do that. The rest of the flight plan is still intact. So I can actually go back up here and say, oh, man, I got to get this right. Oh, yeah, that's what I meant. Ding. And now notice it instantly flips back around. And now I am right back on the correct course that I intended to be traveling on since the beginning. Woo. You can already see how incredibly useful this is as far as being able to kind of zip between it. So let's get a little bit more complicated. Let's say we want to bring on some instrument stuff here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit the FIPPLE page here. I'm going to go down to my PROC button. And this is going to give me the ability to select my approach, arrival, and departure. Um, where we live right now, or where we're parked right now, we have no uh, special departures or anything like that. But we do have the ability to select arrivals as well as departures. Keep in mind, arrivals are going to be a little weird here because, as you notice, it freaked out a little bit. There's no arrivals. So if this happens, you can always hit the uh, proc button to bail. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do select approach, press enter. And now we're going to go ahead and select uh, where we want to do for our approach. Now, if you remember, it automatically picks the best quality approach for us because it knows we were using runway 24, which is awesome. So now notice we have all the different RNAV approaches. We have VOR, we have visual approaches. Yes, we can even select the visual approach to land if we wanted to do that. In this case, I'm going to select ILS for 24. Press enter, it's gonna ask us, what do we want to do for our approach? Um, like personally, I'd rather come out of Nantucket. That's gonna be pretty easy as an initial approach fix. I simply press enter. It then gives us the options to dial in our minimums. Uh, for example, if I want to do barometric minimums, I could come in here and uh, dial that in directly. Uh, let's say we want a barometric minimum. Oh, what is it? It's like 360 feet or something like that. I forget exactly what it is. I don't want to be wrong, but we're just going to estimate that it's that. And now we have the ability to go ahead and uh, pop right here. This gives us the ability to load, or this gives us the ability to activate. Generally with approaches, you load them and then you activate them. But if we wanted to immediately start our approach, there's nothing stopping us from coming over here and pressing the activate button. In this case, I'm just going to load it to stick it onto the of our flight plan. It's going to say, you're not approved for GPS, monitoring only. Are you sure you want? Of course I want to do this. Boop, we're in a flight simulator. GPS is a perfect. All right, so now we're good. If I actually were to come over here and zoom out a teeny tiny bit, uh, notice my excessive level of detail here. Not anymore. Boop, 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 boop. You'll notice that on this sides of things, I have a much better control and you can see all the individual waypoints. And more importantly, it'll preload your frequency correctly here so that when you do your ILS approach, it will automatically latch onto things exactly when you need to actually latch onto them. So you can see already that the flight plan page, even though I never left the ground, is incredibly powerful and it's incredibly useful as far as designing things. Oh, one more thing. If you need to delete something off of a flight plan, simply highlight it Press clear, and then it's going to ask you if you want to delete it. If you delete it from the flight plan, it is gone. So be very mindful of pushing this button, because as soon as you do that, it's been blammoed. And uh, you can't easily get it, because unfortunately, we can't write to these SD cards yet. So hopefully that video is helpful as far as uh, showing you the different flight plan options you have on the G1000NX. I find it an incredibly good use of this. It's a very sophisticated piece of machinery, and it's so much easier to use uh, when you're doing stuff with the IFR. Our next video, we'll go ahead and take a look at the automatic pilot options on this particular aircraft, and I'll uh, kind of take a look at some of the quirks to them. Enjoy.